Welcome to today's live demonstration. We're going to take a demo tour through FrameReady software. This is the same sort of demo that you would receive if we were at the trade show and we had a little bit of time to take a, an overview of the entire program. So I'm going to go right into our FrameReady software program here and say that this is the main menu it's a great place to start there are shortcuts on the main menu for all the things that you would need to do every day however it doesn't reveal anything to your customers about your pricing or reveal any of your customer information to other people as well. then the color blocks are really great because people uh picture framers specifically are so in tune with color and it makes it easier for them to learn the program when everything is color coded and we're going to show you that this is the background color of each of these files so that if you were to click on the invoice file which is the icon to go directly there you'll see the background color is still that same soft blue and the fields that are white are the ones that you would type into same thing if we were to go back to the main menu again and click on the work order button you'll see that the fields that are white are the ones that you're going to type the information into but the background color is a very subtle way of letting you know exactly where you are in the program at any time because you can see the background color of the screen and then once you've learned the background color you know exactly where you are in the program and you don't feel like you you're lost in there so the I area at the top of the screen we have positioned the work orders the contacts and the invoices and those are the three sections that you're going to use the most and there's a, a difference in frame ready we've got work orders separate from invoices and the reason that we do that is because you may want to create multiple work orders and put all of them onto just one invoice or you may want to create an invoice without ever creating a work order because you just want to sell a retail product or service that you provide so that's one of the reasons why we keep them separate and it gives you more flexibility within the program at the top of the screen is our navigational palette and these are the icons that are on all of the screens which make it easy for you to move from one file to the next so that if you were to click on that button or the icon at the top of the screen you will see that navigational palette again at the top which allows you to easily go to any of the other screens that you need to go to and then we're going to go back to the main menu always go back to the main menu it's a great place to let the screen rest when you're not using it it tells everybody else in the shop that you're finished with it and as i said it doesn't reveal pricing or customer information and that way nobody's yelling across the room to say you know are you finished with the screen it's very easy to understand when you are in each of those files there's some consistency in each of them at the navigational bar at the top you'll see that you can either see items in the form view which I'm in right now where I can see all of the details or I can see things in the list view where I can see multiple orders at once and that's the same on every one of these screens I'm in the form view right now but I can go and click on list view to see the list or click find all to see all of the items that are in the list or I can click on one specific record to go directly to that one to see the form view okay moving back to the main menu we're going to get started by creating an order here and going through that there are a couple of ways that you can do that you could go directly to the work order and then click on the new work order button in the top right hand corner but the fastest and easiest way is to click on new work order only use this when you really want to create a new work order otherwise go to the icon to just go directly to the file so i'm going to click new work order and the very first thing that i have it set up this is optional is to say which way does the artwork go and that's really important because if you're bottom weighting the mat and you cut the mat out incorrectly then you cost yourself some money so we want to prevent the errors so I'm going to decide that this is going to be a horizontal piece and you can see that there's a small icon in between the width and the height that identifies that for me. That icon will print out onto the printed work order. If I've entered in the information incorrectly, and I'm just going to take a moment to do that, make sure I do it correctly, but there we are. And now there's the message saying that there's an error, that the window width and height do not agree with the orientation that I've selected. The fastest and easiest way to fix that is to click right back on on that icon and then swap the two numbers and that will reverse them rather than me retyping them in so very easy I find that the orientation icon is uh, very helpful for you so do keep that on don't turn it off uh, okay on the left hand side of the screen we have these little 
arrows that point up and down, and this will increase or decrease the size of the opening. So if this is the piece of art that I have, maybe it's a photo 16 by 20, and what I want to do is I want to have the mat go over top of the image a little bit. So I'm going to use these arrows to decrease the opening size by 16th on both sides. So I've clicked it twice to bring it down. And now I've moved the art, uh, the opening cut in a little bit to be over top of the art. I've also got it preset to automatically enter three inches as a map margin. Now you can click on this drop down list. Uh, the, the gray button will give you the drop down list so that you can select a different measurement if you want. Uh, sometimes people want to have this preset because you want to start out with three and then if you go down smaller then that's okay. If you have employees that perhaps uh, are always doing very small mats this might be encouraging them to start out with a larger size. And now that I have my preset in there as I said I can select either something else from the drop down list or I can go down to the other field if I want to bottom weight this and I can use the word other. And in here, what I'm going to do is I like to do two spaces in between, and that way it's easier for the eye to read and it calculates the numbers quickly and easily for me. So my information down at the bottom is showing me the inside measurement of the frame in the black and the outside measurement in the gray. But there's also a space here called white space, and this is really unique to Frame Ready because it allows us to capture the information of if this was a limited edition print and I had some white paper that's going around the edge of the print, I want to document how much of that paper is going to show. So if I was to select an amount, maybe a quarter of an inch all the way around, but I need more space for the signature, then I can go down to the bottom and select that I need a little bit more space for the signature at the bottom of the piece. So I've entered that in and it's given me my calculations down at the bottom. The white space can also be used to document if you have float art and you're floating a piece of art on top of a map board and you want to identify how much space is going to go in between the art and the edge of the frame. So that's another use that you can use for the white space. So once we've entered in all of our measurements in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, we can move over to the left hand side of the screen and we can start to enter in the materials. Already it's identified for me the preferred glass size that we could be using for this piece and that's just information that's provided to you. But I want to go ahead and enter in the frame that I want to use here and I have selected a frame and all I need to do is look at the back of the frame. If you have a barcode scanner this is great because then you can use the barcode scanner to actually just scan the molding in. A lot of molding items and mat boards do have barcodes on the back of them and once you scan it in it will automatically go to the next field which makes it very fast easy and you're not worrying about mixing up the numbers. The nice thing about entering the numbers in with Frame Ready is that it's going to give you a description of the item to let you know whether you've selected the correct frame or not. And if you have, then it's already identified it for you. If you, and I'm going to go back here and select a different frame here, if you've entered a frame in, you'll see that it gives you the description in most cases. However, if I've entered in a frame, and um, it's not available anymore. The description's going to be gone and now instead it's going to be replaced with the words not verified. And what you can do is if you do realize that it's not verified, you can hold your mouse over top of the description and you can see there's a small tooltip there saying the required footage is nine and a half feet and the quantity on hand is 20. So I know that I actually have enough of this to continue. Otherwise, this is a great time to be able to say to the client while they're still with you in the store that we should look at another option or I'm going to call the company to verify that they do still have some in stock or is it completely out. You can also click on the underlined word frame one and if you do keep stock in manually it would show you under this column here but here's the quantity on hand that I have of the 20 feet that I know I need uh, down in the bottom left hand corner I need nine and a half feet for this but in the top right hand corner I'm showing that I have 20 available. So that's another way that you can check to make sure that you do have the footage available to go ahead with the sale. If I decide that I wanted to stack some frames together over on the left hand side I have the ability to stack five different frames 
here. So I can click on the stacked icon. Now this is the frame one. It's the one that's closest to the art. I want to move this over to frame two and I'm going to insert a different frame into frame one. So I'm going to click on the purple insert button on the right hand side which easily moves the frame over and now all I need to do is type in the map board num the molding number and you'll see that there's a designator at the end of the molding ID, whether it's LJ for Larson Jewel, RM for Roma, uh, this is CH for Chops, and I marked both of them as not verified so that we'd be able to see what it looked like uh, on here as it came up, uh, and you can check with the customer right at the time of sale. After we've entered in the frame, you can see there's a little arrow to the left that tells me that there's more than one frame here. And moving down to the icon, you can see that it is colored in two of the blocks now to let me know that there are two frames in this piece. So it's a good visual reminder to know how many frames are in here. Going to the mats, once I've got the mat that I've selected and I want to enter this mat in, I'm going to look at the back to see whether it's a Bainbridge Crescent or Artic or Peterborough. Um, and you put that letter in front, B for Bainbridge, and I'm going to type in the item number and it automatically selects the mat and enters that in. If I have more than one mat, and maybe I'm going to use the, the same mat in here in the design twice, and you can certainly do that, I have three mats available on this screen, and um, I have the ability to enter more of them in. But once I've entered two mats in, it's going to prompt me to identify the amount to show of the second mat. And over in the right hand side, past the description, is a gray rectangle where I can click in there and select what is the amount that I want to show for the second mat. So now I've selected that I want one quarter of an inch on the second mat and taking from the total of three inches, it's now put into the top mat, the two and three quarters. So this is my total amount uh, between the two of them. You can see the total over on the right hand side. If I decided that I really wanted to have three three inches on that top mat, then I can actually click back on that space and put three in and click apply. And it's going to go over to the right hand side, recalculate all of the measurements for me, remembering that I bottom weighted this piece and I don't have to do the calculations. It's already done. Now that I have two mats in here and I've, I've identified the reveal on them, uh, if I wanted spacers in between them, I could click on the button to add a spacer in between. If I want a reverse bevel on one of the mats, then I can click on the item here to say that I want a reverse bevel in this. And now I'm ready to move down to the fillet field. If I have a fillet that I want to enter in, I have two choices. I can either put it into the stacked frames and insert it into the frame again. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a fillet number in there. And now you'll see when I'm finished that this is going to be three stacked items, or I can place it in with the fillet. And if I click on the fillet field now, I can see that there are two possible places for this fillet to be placed. It can either go in next to the art or it can go in between the two mats. And if I place it in between the two mats, then it's going to take on add in that quarter of an inch for me and it's taken that off of the top measurement again if I wanted to add that three inches back in to keep the top I can click even just on this button here to say add that three inches back in and it's keeping the three inches there or you could decide that I really didn't want it to be three inches I want to go back to the measurement that I was at but each time that I do that it's increasing the size of the frame it's increasing this dimensions and it's increasing the prices of all the elements that I have in here. Now you may have noticed previously that when I was in with the, the fillets, um, because I had two mats entered, I was able to see two mat place, fillet placements. But with the mats, there is the possibility to actually enter up to seven mats in here. And the more mats you have entered, the more fillet placements you will have available to you. Going back to the work order screen, down at the bottom, there were some items that were previously entered in. So the minute that I created the work order, these items were defaulted in there. Uh, this gives you the ability to make sure that you don't miss anything. And if these are standard items that you have on each order, then they are pre-entered. But you do have the ability to change them at any time. Each of these are a drop-down list. So when I click on Matte Design, it shows me the designs that I have available. And then I can select if I wanted a French line or a V-groove. And then there's also a 
field to the right where I can decide what's the placement of that French line or V group going to be. If I don't want any of those items, then I can tab through and go to the next drop down list. When you are creating your drop down list, be sure to use the terminology that everyone in the store is familiar with. And that way, it makes it easy for them to adapt from the previous handwritten method that you may have been using before to the computer method because it's the exact same terminology. However, you may want to decide to group certain items together so that it's easy to find them and you can do that as well. If I decided that I didn't want to use one of the items that's on here or if I wanted to add on an additional item, I can always click on the underlined word Mount Stretch. And this will give me the ability to add up to three other items. So, so I have a total of four items in here. And it's going to give you that drop down list again. So that if I wanted to add something else in here that maybe I was going to be mounting a small object and I wanted to include that in here, then I could include that fee for that small object. And then possibly put something into the note field to say where is that small object going to be placed. And then that would print out onto the work order. So a small object in top uh, left. So that's where it's going to be placed. And then I can be more specific if I want with some measurements. But each of these items will allow you to have three additional items uh, fields to, so that you can put multiple items into each work order. Glass has two. The rest of these have four in total. And of course, Matt's has seven and the frames have five. But if we go through the list uh, of the drop down items, and if you do need to change something, go ahead and change it. Otherwise, it's fast and easy. Because I have that fillet fit in there too, I may want to go into fitting and add a fillet fitting fee on there, which is going to be added on to my regular wood fitting charge. And then it's going to give me the total of those two items. And when I go back to the screen over here, you can see that it's the total of the all of the items that are in this list that have been selected for that group that is appearing over on the right hand side. If there's an item that I don't need, then I can use the teal colored button on the right to remove that item from that list if I don't need it. Down at the bottom is the other field, and this is a drop down list as well that you can customize using the edit field down at the bottom. It is not in alphabetical order, you can change that, but it's the pricing for these items is not determined by the size of the frame, it's determined by outside factors. So if it's shipping fee, it could depend on where you lo locate it. If it's calligraphy, it could depend on how many letters or graving the size of the plate that I'm using. So once you select something from that, you can go over to the right hand side and type in any arbitrary number that you want. So this total is going to be added into the all of the items that are listed here and the total is up here in the top right hand corner of the screen. So this is the measurements and the materials that we've covered so far. And there's also a field on here called multi-angle. And if you do use that, it's got a percentage. So what it'll do is multiply all of the items in here. Uh, not too many people are doing multi-angle frames right now, but you can be using this for other things such as rush charges or design fees, so that the more complex the frame, the higher the rush charge or the design fee. The simpler the frame, the lower the rush charge. So that's just another way that you can use some of the fields that are in here already. So Chrissy, I'm going to transfer this over to you. And if you want to go ahead and run our first poll. Sure, I can do that as soon as I find it. All right, so I'm going to launch the poll. Which files in Frame Ready do you use most often? Work order, contacts, invoices, and sales reports price codes and purchase orders, and or products. Like, I'm going to close it and then I, do you want me to share or do you want me to pause? No, no, you go ahead and share. Okay, one sec. Okay, yeah, everybody uses the work order screen. If you're gonna be doing any work at all, for sure. Yeah, okay, and I think that's pretty common that uh, when people start using the program, they use the work orders, the contacts, the invoices. Um, products, not everybody uses that, but we'll, we'll take a look briefly at that as well and see how you might be able to use it. Just going back to what we have on this order here, I, I mentioned that there's a breakdown of each of the prices that are on 
the individual items for this, which is great because one of the reasons that you want to be able to see those individual prices is that if the customer takes a look at the price up in the top right hand corner and decides that maybe that's too expensive for them, you have the ability to say that, okay, well, looking at the prices here, we have two mats. Let me show you what it would look like if we took out the mat, or let me show you what it would look like if we took out the fillet, that would reduce it by $90, or if we took out the mat, that would reduce it by $36. And this gives them the ability to say, oh, you know, for $36, yeah, I like the design, go ahead and stick with that. Um, so you have the ability to change items if they don't want to go with museum glass, you can give them the option to say, let's go to conservation clear, and then you'll see the price difference on, on those items. The other thing you can do is save them in scenarios and say, we've got a great design here, let's go back, save this in the scenarios. And you can save up to five different designs in the scenarios and put them over to the right. And then when you go back to your uh, section on the previous screen, you can go ahead and make changes to that carefully because you know that it's all right, I've already got everything saved in here. So now if I was to go in and remove um, let's take the fillet out and move everything back over. Okay, and now we've removed the fillet. Um, we've changed the glass. We, they want to go ahead with museum glass because they like that. So you've got multiple designs and you can show those to people and say, well, here are the differences between the designs. Which one do you want to go with? So just one of those little things on having that fluidity and ease of changing the price and knowing the price and working with the customer to give them the design that they want. We're going to move up to the artwork section. We have our measurements, we have our materials, and now I'm moving up to artwork. This is a, a field that sometimes people overlook. It's a great way of identifying the art that's coming in. If you click on the word artwork, it gives you a drop down list. I've entered these items in at the top of my list because they might be things that we do and I want to track them separately to know how much money is coming in from printing or restoration or scanning. But then the type of art that you're actually putting in here is so it could be a photo. And rather than me typing in photo, then I can just select that and it's going to print out onto the printed work order, which tells the framer what are we doing here? What am I looking for? So this is a, a photo of daffodils and I've entered in a description. This is going to print out onto the invoice when you give it to the customer. So you want to have that clear description and if they come back in again to have something framed, you don't want to have just the word photo in here that they had a photo done before. You want to know, is this the photo of the daffodils, the family picture, the, it was Wisconsin, um, you know, cabin, whatever it is that you've got that you've taken the picture of. Over to the right hand side, very important to identify the condition of the art. So when you click on condition, it's going to give you a drop down list, good as is as good as it gets, not great. But then if you do have something that it's rolled, maybe there's a it's creased, you can select that from the drop down list, but then you can also say in top right corner. OK, and that's going to print out onto the work order as well. If you want the customer to sign that, then they can. And they are confirming that, yes, this damage happened before it came into your business. You are not responsible for the damage that occurred. The other thing that you could do is that you can take a picture of it and put that in. And I've got a, a picture here. I'm just going to drag that and drop it in. You can click on the the plus button to add the image in if you want and go find it. Um, the other thing that'll pop up when you do that is it's going to tell you the size. This image I know is 1.8 megabytes. So I'm going to click the resize button because I don't want my frame ready program to become overinflated with large images that don't need to be in there. I'm only going to print out a small image of this so I don't need it that size. So it has the option to resize it. I'm going to click OK and it's going to resize this to a manageable size that still prints out wonderfully on the work order and on the invoice. But it's not going to take up so much space that it makes it difficult to back up my software program because it has lots of images at high resolution quality. So if you are in the picture file and you can see now it's bold and it says that I have a picture, there's also a section down here that if you wanted to make a note about print you could or you can go to the photo file and this is where you can have multiple images. So I've got one image of the piece and now I want to take images of the details, the damages and I can print out over here on the left hand side small tear in top left corner, take a picture of the tear that's on there and I can have multiples of them showing the damage that was done and it's date and time stamped for each one of these that goes in. Again, 
again, protecting you to say that this happened prior to it coming into your business. One of the great tips that somebody shared with me was that they had one record that they put in all the steps that they need for putting picture framing together and why it's labor intensive, why it's a custom work. And they can show this to people when people are asking, why is it so expensive? And they go through this list and they see all the work that's involved and they go, ah, oh, now I understand. So it's a, a great little tool there as well. So I'm going to close that up. The next thing for the artwork section is that I want to identify the location. And the location fields help me to identify where the art is before it came into the business and as it moves through the process, where it is after it's done so that when the customer comes in to pick it up, I know exactly where to go to find it. And then when the customer has picked it up, I'm going to mark it as picked up so that I don't have that situation where the husband picks it up on the morning on the way to work and the wife comes in later um, in the day and she's wanting to pick it up and everyone's running around frantically looking for this piece that's already gone. So if you identify that it's picked up, it keeps a clear, easy understanding for everyone in the store to know exactly where things are. And you look very polished as well to say it's already been picked up and then she says, yes, up. Uh, you know, I, my spouse said they might pick it up earlier today. So I'm going to identify where it's being placed right now. So this prints out onto the work order as well. The framer knows exactly where to find it and there's no confusion or asking someone and they've gone for lunch and you can't find them. So now we're going to the art section. You can identify who the artist is. You have a drop down list or if you just want to type in who the artist is because you don't want it in your list, you can add that in as well. Entered in the art information in here as well. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move up to the top here where the customer information is. And a lot of people want to start with the customer information. Um, my preference is to start with meeting the customer's needs. They already know their name. They already know their email address. They want to know, here's my piece of art. How much is it going to cost me? So they're going to look at that. And what design are you going to create for me? So I need the measurements in order to be able to calculate the retail price once I put the design in. So I'm going to meet the customer's needs first, and then I'm going to move up to the last thing is I want to know what's their name if they're a new customer that's just come in. There are exceptions to this, though. If this is a piece of art that you're purchasing and you're going to look it up using the magnifying glass from the file that you have in your products file, then I would want to enter that in first because it's going to enter in all the measurements for me. Or if this is a customer that I recognize and I can't remember their name, I might, before we start, ask them for their phone number. No one expects you to remember their phone number. And then once I've entered in their phone number, it's going to automatically pull that customer up. If this is the case where it's a customer that's new, um, that you think they may have been in before, you can look them up by name or by company. I'm going to click on the name field and enter in my customer here, Tim Taylor, and I don't remember if it's ER or OR, so I'm just going to type in a few letters, or if the person's name was Susan, I might just type in SU because I don't know if they were entered in a Sue or Susan. So a few letters sometimes is easier for finding that person, and it's automatically found that customer for me. Now, the benefit, though, is that if I have entered that customer in previously, they are a customer that I recognize, I can go ahead and enter them in right at the very start of the sale. Because one of the things that's really valuable is that I can go up to the button above their name, which is the contacts file. And if I click on that button, it goes directly to the record for Tim Taylor. And while I'm in here, there's a section called group details. And when I click on that, it tells me anything that I've documented or anyone who's worked with Tim in the past that they have documented so that I can see here that he has a back injury, can't stand for longer for 30 minutes. That's helpful information to me. So I know that I'm going to offer Tim a chair. So when he's looking around, maybe at different molding that's on the wall or other things, I can go back to the record his record in the contacts file, look these items up, know that he doesn't like metal frames or uh, white mats. Uh, there's a vase that we have that he might be interested in. All of these things are helpful to make me uh, more aware of what the customer needs and how I can better serve them or give them the design that they want. If he's walking back to the computer, I can always go back to the work order screen and then say to him, you know, do you want to have a, a chair to sit down? I know we've been standing for a while and he's going to really appreciate that. So 
that information is all available under the contacts file. If I need to change the phone number or if I need to change an email address on here, then I can do that right on this screen. If I need to change his address, however, that is where I would like to go back to the contact file. Or if I wanted to know um, anything about him, he takes our photo classes, he's an Optimist member, um, if he has a discount that he receives all of the time or on specific items, then those are going to be keyed in automatically for me the minute I select his name and enter it onto the work order. So I can go back to the work order now and see all of that information. Again, there's a customer note. This customer note doesn't appear any place on any of the printed documentation. It simply is letting me know that either it's a VIP customer or I shouldn't take checks from this customer, any key information that I need. Over to the right, we have the shop management section. So now that I've got my customer information and I've got all the information and the tools that I need to help build that relationship with that customer, I'm going to take a look at the shop management and say, this is the date that the order was created, the date that it's due. If I need to change that to a different date, I can do that. And it, it will tell me if there are any other orders due on that same date that's available to me. If the shop uh, is normal, this is normal for us, I could say that I promised it to be done on a certain date or it's a rush order because we said it would have to be done on a specific date. The order taken by is important to identify who took the order and if I'm sending out an email to the customer letting them know when it's done, it's going to put that person's name onto the order list so that it's continuing to reinforce that relationship that you have with the customer. Moving over to the right hand side, we've got the price section. Now the word discount doesn't appear any place on this screen, so it's showing me the price up in the top right hand corner. Now if I was to click on the options tab, because I do want to give them a discount, then what I can do is go down and either enter it in as a dollar amount, or you can see that he already has 25% off on this order because he's a very special customer. So he's receiving that discount already. If I wanted to remove that, and then I can or apply it to the art. Now I'm going to go back to the price section up here at the top. If there's a quantity greater than one, then I can change that and you'll see that the amount has been doubled for the price that he is receiving. However, if I go back and I decide that he um, does get a discount, but I don't want my labor to be discounted and my time to be discounted. I have the ability down in the bottom here to say under fitting, I don't want those items to be discounted. And when I put an X in that box, you're going to see that that has been separated out now so that the labor has not been discounted at all. So that's an option that I have available to me. And also, if the customer is taking a look at the top right hand corner of this, which is usually where the customer is looking, they're going to be looking at the top right hand corner with the price. They're also looking at their information to make sure it's the same, correct, if they are seeing your screen. But I know from looking at this piece that it's going to cost me $109 in the cost of materials that I'm using to put this together. So I know how much room I have for that discount or if this was a charity piece, what I need to at least get out of that. The customer doesn't know that number. Anybody looking at the screen doesn't really see it, but if you can see the price in the top right hand corner, way down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen is the number in gray. And this is the cost of the materials used, not the materials purchased, but the materials used. And down below that is the United Inch measurement uh, for this piece. There's also a report that you can print out to say um, uh, what is my cost of materials for the all of the items that are in this list that are being used on here. And it'll give you the percentages to see, am I making enough profit on this or not? Are there some items that I'm making less profit, some that I'm making more? And it's a great way to say if the price sorry, and the top right hand corner is too close to the amount in the bottom left hand corner, then you know there's something off with your pricing and you may need to make a quick adjustment in order to bring it up and you can do that. So we've covered the measurements over in the bottom right, the materials in the bottom left, the artwork on the left hand side, the customer information, the shop management and order information, and then also the pricing. So the next thing that we want to do is that the customers agreed that they want to go ahead with this and we want to print out a copy for our shop. Two ways that you can do this. One is to click on the button at the top to click, 
print out this order. And you'll see that when we do this, Jim was in earlier, he had a second order. Um, and so I'm gonna print out this first one. This is printing just this one order. You can see on the left-hand side is the image that I printed in that put onto the work order. It's going to print out for the framer to know exactly what the piece is. There's all kinds of information on here as well, saying the customer's information. It's a photo of the daffodils. It's in bin two. There's a, a crease in the top right-hand corner. The bin locations of the molding, the footage that I need, the prices are appearing. If you don't want the prices on there, you can remove that. The notes up here on the top, uh, saying the small object that's going to be put there. And if you want the customer to sign it, you, there's a default or a footnote down at the bottom that you can change and put any information in there, have the customer sign it or initial it to say yes, they acknowledge that the damage was done prior to entering your business. Click cancel to move on. Now if the customer had more than one, you could print the customer's orders on the left hand side here and the only difference on this is that uh, in here uh, it's going to show you one of two, two. So it's going to print out both of those orders for me at the same time which makes it easier I don't have to go back to each one. On the left hand side if I've clicked on that the next thing I want to do is post this to an invoice to take a payment. It's really important that I take a deposit on each piece to make sure I'm covering the materials that I'm purchasing to create this. So I'm going to click on post to invoice on the left hand side of the screen. All right, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna print a summary? Summaries are great if the customer um, has a piece that's been done in the past and maybe there's some damage uh, it, due to fire or flooding and you wanna print a summary out for insurance purposes. I find we don't necessarily need it in this case because I'm going to give them a copy of the invoice. So I'm going to click on post only and that shows me the list of the orders that Jim has. Here's the two orders that he brought in today. If we want both of them to go over to the invoice, we can do that. And I'm going to click on the continue button on the far right hand side. Okay, and it's placed both of them over here. Now, if Jim was to say to me that he really doesn't want to go ahead with the spring gate right now, this is the flexibility that we have in frame ready that I can say, okay, I'm going to remove the spring gate. And when I click on the delete button, it's going to say, do you want to unpost that as if it was never on this invoice? I'm going to say yes. And it puts it back to being an order that was not posted to an invoice. So it's easy for me to find all my unposted invoices, or sorry, my unposted work orders, um, make sure that they're estimates, call, follow up with the client later to see if they want to go ahead with that sale. If I want to add any retail products to this, I can click on the magnifying glass and find that retail product in here. If it's um, a ready-made frame, uh, then I can put that in there. I don't know if I have any in here for ready-made frames. Oh, I do, I've got lots of them in here. There we go, so I've got a circular frame that he's purchasing as well, and he's going to take that home and frame it for something. So that's going to automatically update my inventory for my retail products as well. So now that I've moved down to the bottom left hand so corner of the screen, I'm going to take a payment. And when I click on enter a payment, it automatically pulls up the full amount and gives me a drop down list of all the methods of payment that I use in my business. Down at the bottom is again the edit so that I can change any of the things that are in here that I want to use. And FrameReady is also available to use with credit card processing as well as QuickBooks. So I can do that at this time if I want it. I'm going to go ahead and say that perhaps he's paying by check. Um, he's going to give me 50%. So I'm going to use the calculate 50% button to automatically reduce the amount that he's paying. However, he does have that frame on there. So I might want to just go back into the box and say he's agreed that he's going to pay $425 on this at this time. So that's the amount. Um, if it was a check, I could put in an authorization or the number of the check in here. Do not enter credit card numbers in here. This is only for authorization or reference numbers. Okay. Over on the right hand side, now that we're finished with that, I want to print out a copy of the invoice form. So I'm going to click on print invoice done and it's going to pull up the invoice for me. Your logo will appear on any document that you can easily hand to a customer. It's gonna help you market your business so that the customers um, are recognizing your branding.
If your logo does not appear on that document, it's an in-house document. So you'll notice that the work order did not have a logo on it, meaning it's in-house, it's not going to use that space. We're using it for other information. So we have the two items that he has purchased. The uh, Down at the bottom of the screen, it's showing me the total, how much he saved because he had a discount. If he doesn't have a discount, the word discount and savings will not appear on here at all. So it's not letting them feel that they've missed out on something. I'm going to go ahead and print this out for him and then he can go with it. Or if he wants, what I can do, is, because he has an email, I can email this to him by clicking on the email button. It's going to automatically pull up my email system. If you're using uh, an in-house email program, you could, it will pull that up if you are using the, the frame ready email. So it's identified him, it's addressed it to him, and this is pre-scripted. So what it's done is it's automatically put in all the information. If I wanted to add in an additional message saying, so glad you picked up that frame. I think it's going to look great. Let me know if you need any help with it. So any of that information that you want to add in, you can, and then go ahead and send it to the customer. And then um, once that's finished, so once the, it has been sent, it's going to be documented in his record. I'm going to move to the contacts file now, because in the contacts file, we've created a work order. We've created an invoice. All that information has been carefully documented and you didn't have to document it, it's in here. And the program has done that for you. So any work orders that have been created for him are in here right now, the Springgate and the Daffodils, they're, they're both in here. Um, any of the invoices that have been created are in here and they're being totaled up. And it's showing me the value of this customer from the point of sale, how much he has spent. And if I wanted to, I could actually do a ranking to find out who are my best customers uh, and do a find for my top customers. And I can then do a mailing to my top 100 customers. And I can do that ranking based on any time frame, whether it's for since I've been using the program or just for the current year or any year. So all of that information is stored. All I had to do was create one work order and it automatically transferred that information to the invoice. And then it is also cataloged it and put it onto the customer's record, which makes it very easy for me to go back to any of these orders that he's had done in the past and go ahead and reproduce them and duplicate them. Uh, if I click on that, then I can duplicate it and go ahead, update it to the current pricing. And now I have another order for that customer. So I'm going to go back to the main menu now. Main menu is always a great place to go whenever you're finished using the screen. As I said, it tells everyone else in the shop that you're done. So it's time for us to do another poll. Chrissy, you have one ready for us? Yes, I do. Great. Which benefits did you receive from using Frame Ready? Price updates and notifications of discontinued items on work order. Customers don't question the price time saving, work order to invoice to purchase order and customer information, consistent pricing by all staff on work orders and eliminate errors, map or item number and forgotten charges. Super. And that was one of the things I did want to mention. We had a gentleman who was looking at getting a software program for his staff and he asked all seven of them if we needed it. And he said, they said, no, they didn't. So he brought out a design, had all of them do the same design at the same time. And he compared the prices and it turned out that they were all different prices. So he decided, no, in order for us to be consistent, we really need to do that. So Thank you, Chrissy. You've got the uh, benefits of using Frame Ready that everybody feels, oh, those are great. Yeah. The, the pricing updates, question it. customers really don't question the price you know, when it's calculated by the computer. It's, they feel that it's fair and honest. That's wonderful. Yeah, and eliminating the errors is great too. Super. Thank you, Chrissy. No problem. And we do not have questions. Okay. Moving back to frame ready then. Now that you've got your order, you need to go and find out uh, what needs to be done. So this is where we're going to take a look at that find incomplete work order list. Once we've clicked on that button, it shows you all of the incomplete orders that need to be done down at the bottom, up at the top. You can see all of them. And this is a, a printed list that you can 
uh, use, you can either click on the print list button at the top of the screen, print that out, put it into the back of the shop. It looks exactly like the screen did. So it's got lots of space for you to, to work on and you know write notes in. But the one that I like a little bit better is under reports, we go to incomplete schedule. And when you click on that, it shows you and we'll just do it for the found set. And you can do this for each day. So each day you print out all the orders that came in that day. And then as the papers pile up in the back, you know the ones that are at the farthest to the back are the ones that haven't been done yet and need to be done the most urgently, or you put that one at the front. So on this, I like this printout because it gives me the due date, the work order number, the customer, the description, the frame size, but it also gives me the information on, on the mats that are being used, up to three mats, and then also the mounting and the glass that's being used. When you have completed the you can initial it or put the date in, identify where it is. So as they're finished pieces, they can say that they put it into bin number three, bin number two, bin number four. And then at the end of the day, you can go through this, go back to the list view at the top of the screen. And now you can say on our list that this one has been completed and they placed it in bin number two. This one has also been completed for Sarah and they placed this one in bin number one for some reason. So they're in different places, but they're both complete. And now I can click on the email address for Sarah and let her know that this is ready for her to pick it up. So great reason to collect email addresses. And when you are collecting those email addresses, what you wanna do is you wanna say, um, uh, this is, uh, thank you for your name and everything, but then also say, and what is your email address? I'll send you an email when the piece is finished. Uh, and this is the email that it would send out. So there's a pre-scripted message in there that identifies what it is that's being framed, her framing of this piece called chocolate. And it's going to be ready on these hours. So again, any special messages that you want to put in there, go ahead and put those in. And it will do it for you. So at the end of the day, you have those sent out. Now, when we come back and say that uh, the customer has, those are completed, let's say that Sarah's coming back in to pick up one of those pieces, but of course, I may not know her name. And all I know is that the piece is completed. Uh, I'm going to say, I want to find that work order. Now, if she gives me her first name and, I, and, and she says, oh, it's Sarah. And, and I'm thinking, okay. And I'm, I'm not sure if it has the H on the end or not. And she said that she had a piece that was completed and it was a picture of chocolate. Um, that's great. I could put any information in. And a lot of times you can remember that they had a specific frame or a mat or something unique about the piece. This is another great feature of Frame Ready, this search screen that allows you to find anything on here at all that you want. There we are. So there's the pieces for Sarah. Here's the most recent piece that she had done. Now that Sarah has come in to pick up the piece, I'm going to identify that it has been picked up so that we know that this she has picked this piece up and I can, if she had a second piece and she's picking that one up right now, I'll go and mark that one as well. But I want to go and find the invoice because if, uh, actually this hasn't been posted yet, so it should be posted to an invoice. But let's go to the one that we were working with earlier today, find all last record. Here is Jim Taylor. In the top right corner, I can see that Jim had a deposit. If he was picking up this piece, then over on the left-hand side, I can see that it says posted and there is the find invoice button. So when I click on find invoice, I'm going to say that yes, your piece is ready. It's in drawer number two or ready bin number two. I'm going to mark it down that he's picked it up. I'm going to go over to the left-hand side, click on find invoice. And now on his invoice, I'm going to take his final payment and he's going to decide um, while I'm going to get the piece, how do you want to pay for that? Visa, check, MasterCard, whatever it is, the payment method that you take. And then if he wants me to email the invoice to him, I'm just going to say done, go to form view, and then I can send the email of the invoice to him. So the final payment has been made. If I am doing QuickBooks, then I would update it in QuickBooks at that time as well. There are multiple other screens in Frame Ready. Each one of them has special features that are going to help you to do the things that you need to do to keep your business up to date. The price codes file is where you're going to keep molding, mat board, and fabric up to date with our vendor updates that we have available to you that are automated. And then you also need to keep the other items up to date as well. But the volume that you're going to keep up to date with all of the molding and mats in here is really helpful. Also knowing which ones are discontinued and which ones are still available. So your pricing's up to date all the time. 
in order for you to purchase the items that you need, you're going to go to the purchase orders file. This is where you can, I, Frame Ready will take all the information that you've created on the work orders and compile the list for you. So rather than you sitting there with each of those pieces of paper trying to figure out what you need, Frame Ready is going to compile the list. And then when you're looking through the list, if you need to consolidate the items, you can click the consolidate order and it's going to total up what you need on that order. We also have the products file, so any of the retail products that you sell, and you can sell anything from consignment artwork to ready-made frames to jewelry to furniture, anything that you can pull off the shelf and sell is listed in the products file. It makes it easier for you to be able to keep up to date with your inventory, track the items to know how often they are selling, and if they're selling quite often, then it might be uh, keeping track of how many have sold, when's the last time that they sold, the turnaround time, all of that information is in there. We also have gift certificates so that if you wanted to print out a gift certificate for someone, you can show them the different designs that they come in and then print them out in English, French or Spanish. And that's great because the person that is receiving it may not necessarily be uh, comfortable with English. So those are all available to you. We have two versions of Frame Ready. You have the standard version that you're looking at right now, but we also have a light version of Frame Ready. And that light version will have the work orders, the contacts, the price codes, and the purchase orders. So only those four blocks will be on the light version. If you are a frame shop that is doing the invoicing, then you definitely want to have the standard version of Frame Ready. If you are a Photoshop or possibly a giftware shop and you already have a point of sale, then you can look at the light version of Frame Ready. So those are the options that we have available. We hope that you found this helpful. Chrissy, I think you have some information for us. Yes, I do. And I just wanted to point out, you kept saying Jim Miller, but it says Tim Miller. So you, you want to tell everyone why you're doing that? Yes, so Jim Taylor is usually my my customer that I always work with, but the J on my keyboard is broken and doesn't always press down, so I changed it to Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you just kept saying Jim, so I thought someone um, else noticed this and think Carol's gone crazy, but she really hasn't. It's her keyboard. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That's so funny. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.